Hey everybody. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about some of these books that um, I have. Some of you have seen them here in the office. And there's a, uh, a few I'd like to share. The first one is, is uh, It's Hype Matters by Jim Williams. And I probably brought this out to some of you in class, but for those of you that don't know this book, Type Matters, it's really good for the beginner. It's a great fundamental start to learning an overview of, of type. It has a brief, brief history, but it gets down into knowing um, the fundamentals of, of typography right away. And the thing I also love about this book, other than it's leather bound, is it's printed in two colors. So the way it's designed is very, very simple. And it uses large type and then explanations in red. And so as you can see here, it goes through just the simple basics of classification, things like that. And um, it gets this into some detail, but it's not uh, some detail, but it's not a deep dive, right? Uh, some of the things in here that are, are great as far as intricacies is something like uh, like an in type two class I would explain. Um, as a type gets larger, the character spacing gets narrower, just like in this headline example. So I see a lot of headlines like this, but this is preferred, where the characters are a little bit closer together and the letting can go to more of a setting solid, like a 12 on 13 or 12 on 14 or 12 on 12. Another example I found is something like this, where I've, I've told all my students to, that punctuation always overhangs. This is a good example because I see this mistake a lot in headlines in large type, where you can see the type is offset on the first line because of the quotation mark. Uh, you need to know that type always aligns to type, even on the center line here. So the punctuation overhangs. So you want to align type to type always, even when it's centered. And so for a headline also, they brought in the character uh, spacing and brought, brought down the letting. So you can see it's a little tighter there. Because we read this much faster. Some other sections in here that are of interest are just some other details of kerning as well. You know, some characters that need the kerning. Um, this is also another good one that I, I make reference to in my classes of when using um, all caps for, for type to spread them out a little bit. And this is just showing the extreme of that. There's a little bit of a difference between, you know, uh, a little bit more subtlety. So this book has a lot of really basic essentials to it. I would even, this would be a great gift for those marketing execs that you work with, maybe. Just to, I mean, because they could read this in a day and um, give them a basic knowledge and a, and a connection to what we do as designers. Uh, another one that I like is The Anatomy of Time. And this is more for designers because this whole book is designed around classification, knowing classification and what types of characters and typefaces uh, are in, in, included in uh, cl certain classifications. So it starts out giving you an overview of classifications based on the, these uh, lowercase a's here. But it's great because it'll show you what section you're in as far as the classification for this case, uh, the classic humanist, Sarah. And it gives a list of typefaces that are talked about here. But the thing that's great is, is that a lot of designers, especially younger designers, always def default to either what's on the computer or what's been used the most, say like Gil Sands or Futura or something like that. Um, or even Myriad, let's say. But this. This gives examples of the classics and the contemporary ones that maybe have been designed in the last decade. And for those designers that are, are not constantly looking at type like, like me and, and knowing the typefaces that just come out, this is a good place to start. Because how these, how these are laid out is it'll show um, a, cla a classical typeface like Jensen here that is you know, designed a long time ago. And it's, it's uh, all of us uh, seasoned designers know what this is, but it also compares it to another typeface, to a couple other typefaces down here that are either in, uh, they're both in the same classification. But they'll also compare them to another, like, like say, classic or a newer typeface, such as Centaur or Kala, right? So, the thing that's great is that it compares classics to contemporaries, 
but it also gives you an option to either uh, say your piece is supposed to be for the Getty, let's say, and you want something more historic or classical, then you would use one of the more classical ones, or you'd, you'd look up more information on the contemporary one. So more online, let's say, like, uh, this is an FF Clifford, so you can look on the font, font font or font shop website to find that. But this is a great example. It goes all the way through the classifications. And this is really more of a deeper dive into classifications because um, in my fundamental uh, classifications that I teach, I just teach the basic eight. But this one, it doubles that. It gets into 16. It subdivides the grotesque class into classic grotesque and then neoclassical. So it's a bit confusing, but it, again, this is really for seasoned designers that want to have a, a better understanding of classification, how they can use it for a typeface choice. My last one here is really for the seasoned designer. This is uh, called Reading Letters by Sophia Beyer. And this is like where I'm at now as far as studying typography. This gets into more of a deeper history and data-driven assessment of typography. And it does have classification in here, but you're going to see a lot of these charts throughout the book. And this is more, guys, this is more of a, a study on how we read, which is what I'm kind of involved with now as a better understanding of how we read to explain to clients that this typeface doesn't work because it's harder on the reader and that kind of a thing. But she goes into a lot of detail and scientific study on how we read. And um, you can see it right here in Chapter 2, Understanding Reading. So it gets into a lot of analytics. So you're going to see a lot of studies like this and this of you know, a real deep dive on how characters are formed and, and designed now. How we see words as a whole, which is a type I teach in my fundamental classes, and what the, what the story is with spacing and how it affects us, legibility history. This book, Karina, if you're, if you're interested, this would be for you to read, actually. It, uh, it talks more about the psychology of reading and how letters are formed, even, even comparing them to the classics a long time ago, and then the new ones that were designed. So, theories on letter structure. But what's great in here too, guys, is it also comes in from the beginning of uh, calligraphy. It shows you how letters are formed. So even a, even a beginning designer would, this is a good place to start to understand that. Um, for those of you that do larger format design, like posters, there's a section in here that's great on that aspect because it's talking about, I'm trying to find it real quick. I did mark these, but for some reason I'm showing up here. It has a study on distance of seeing typefaces at certain distances. So there's this chapter on um, type for distance viewing, which was interesting to me because I always wanted to do this as a thesis if I ever went to get my master's. I would want to I always wanted to do speed and distance as a study for typeface design and, and reading. But this one has a, a great analogy in here of how uh, certain typefaces were designed for distance, you know, like our highway signs, and how our, some, when our eyes get bad, what it sees, the open counters. So the typefaces have to have larger open counters to be seen at a greater distance. It also has something in here that I, it explained to me that I was learning about a long time ago was all caps are lowercase for distance reading. So it says in here basically that at a lar longer distance, say like a mile or so, or a, not even a mile, but for a longer distance, let's say, you would have all caps would be better, say maybe on the highway level, and then lowercase maybe on the street level, right? But it, they would show how it's been redesigned because this counter in the E is closing here. So they opened it up and made a higher X height. So it gets into a lot of those details. And another, another one to go a step further here is going from the highway sign to the medicine bottle. Because if you look at uh, pharmaceutical medicine bottles, you know the little amber bottle, the labels they put on there are typically in all caps. So they've researched to see that, that when the, the focus or the, 
our phobias start to blur when we see up close, when we study like uh, when we're in our 60s or whatever, um, it is better to have all caps uh, at a closer range, like within a foot. And so it gets into all that detail. And if you really want to know, some people ask me, when did we get italics? You know, it has the italic evolution in here because it, you know, it came in the, the, the 15th and 16th century and the French and the Italians were back and forth. And it goes into a little bit of that history. And the details of italics, though, how, this, how some have different stresses within the typeface and so on. Um, so I really like this book as far as a, a deeper dive. This would be like a type three if I was teaching it for me. Um, so the students really get a deeper understanding of psych psychology of reading, especially now that we're doing more digital and mobile. Okay, other than that, that's it. We can take some questions. Yeah, so if you'd like to ask any questions,